Welcome to the Shulamite Podcast, an extension of Shulamite Ministries and Shulamite.com, with weekly interviews and teaching with author and speaker Martha Kilpatrick and hosted by John Enslow. This weekly podcast is a way to stay connected to the ministry. So come experience anointed messages, not giving just another method, but a living impartation. We spend so much time, and I'm going to say we, I, I, I could speak just for myself though. I have spent so much time in my life gauging and analyzing the darkness, the evil, the uphill battle. Okay, I'm not saying that I was steeped in the occult. I don't want you to think I'm not going there. But it, you know, if you're steeped in politics, you're no less steeped in the battle, and and it's all one side. Okay, if you're steeped in the culture war, same thing. But what are you looking at? And that's that's what is so shocking because when the Lord really breaks through, and and I haven't talked about this, but the Lord had me fast for two months from all political news. All religious news. Yes, I followed that too. And organized religion in the U.S. is a cesspit as big as the U.S. government. Ugh. I couldn't look at any of that. Two months. Two months away from that. I was allowed to read stories. I was allowed to read the Bible. I had my devotions. It wasn't like he said, you know, go sit in a corner and hum to yourself. But there were certain areas that I had to be broken from and and it had become an addiction and what i was addicted to was trying to figure a way out i was addicted to trying to figure out how the victory where how can you win and at the end of the day the short answer is you can't the long answer is he has already won and we get to watch with joy and delight as this victory unfolds in ways we never even looked for. We could not possibly have foreseen. And I promise you that back in the day on the island of Ireland, the Druids weren't sitting around and saying, you know what, in a couple hundred years, not only are we going to be gone, completely annihilated, but even the memory of us is going to be incredibly inaccurate and such that we would kill ourselves to hear about how we're basically my little pony unicorns running around in robes. Okay? That, that, none of that they couldn't foresee beyond the power that they held. And the more I got away from it, the less taken under I was. And the more I was like, God, what are you doing? Where where are you in this? And it was like even when I came back, first of all, I've I've never gone back to the the sheer amount of time that I spent on that. But when I read things now, first I, I read them with an eye to prayer, but second, sometimes I find myself laughing because I say, you know, I, I can't see a single way done, but man, that is no match for you. When you decide to move, Lord. How amazing that's going to be. And I don't think that the darkness is ever meant to do anything other than to make it easier to see the light. <laughs> I'm seeing something so amazing about sovereignty, and I would love to write about it or somebody write about it. And it is that when sovereignty is brought in, the, that's what turns the world around. The prayer we're supposed to pray, the, the, the order of our priority is thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And bringing the kingdom in means bringing the king who is absolute sovereignty and has the name above every single name. I think about that all the time. There is nothing that can stand up to that name, Jesus. So we are given a responsibility to uh, uh, God's dominion, to God's sovereignty, to bring it here. God is sovereign over everything. That's no question. Yet there are things he wants us to join him 
in establishing his sovereignty. And it's a tremendous responsibility. If we do nothing but pray, we are responsible to bring his dominion down to this earth as St. Patrick did. That's what he did. He brought the kingdom in bringing the sovereignty of God through, but first through his own personal life and its nightmares. He learned to transcend pain and suffering. He learned to love his enemy. He was called to, in, in a dream, his slave master that subjected him to such hideous suffering. He dreamed he was saying, come back, I need you. And he went back. Though he didn't want to, he went back and converted that man and converted, I believe at the time, the king of the island, whoever that was. So it's our journey of the sovereign touch is that critical to the history of mankind. What God can do to those who reconciled with God, that he really is God, and honor him as God and give thanks. When we come to that place, we are unleashed to the world with his backing and his unction through the sovereignty you've allowed to kill you into this world. We have that responsibility and that privilege. So this is an incredible story that St. Patrick is, that how you deal with what happens in your life, how you deal with it with God, how you let God touch you and heal you with his amazing hand, as John Scott pictured, his amazing touch then we become modern-day St. Patrick's and modern-day Joseph's who come through suffering to a place of ruling and reigning. And they're not going to be many because it takes a lot of courage to face your own hatred, your own rebellion against God being God, your own story being permeated with his touch so that it's transformed into a beautiful, powerful, dynamic impact on the world. That's the possibility that we're coming to through John's book and whatever else God does with us. But our message, our message is sovereignty. It's the message, it's the central message of my life. John inherited it. He didn't have it when I met him. He didn't have any belief in sovereignty. And I didn't push it on him. He grabbed it and took it and made his own testimony personally. We have a personal testimony as to whether we're going to be on the rebellion side or we're going to be on the sovereignty side, that he is God, and when God, your God is God, you are unbeatable and undefeatable. You have entered the realm of the kingdom when you let him be king, and everything is available to you. I'm going to say I have a little booklet called Kingdom Safety and Kingdom Children. And though that's about letting the king. It's about sovereignty, although it's named the kingdom. But that's our that must be our prayer. If we can pray a Saint Patrick in, if we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom and the will are the same. If you seek the will of God, you're in the kingdom. If you seek the kingdom, you've got to be in the will of God. So it's a matter of surrender. To God is God, and I'm not, and you're not, and Satan's not. Nobody's God but God. And the scriptures are full of this one statement, so that you will know, I am God, and there is no other. That's what, he, that's what life is about, to know that I am God, and there is no other. No rival, no other God, but one. We hope you've enjoyed the Shulamite podcast. For all the latest from Shulamite Ministries, please visit us at shulamite.com where you'll find Martha's daily devotions, posts from getalongwithgod.com, and the online library of all of Martha's writings. At shulamite.com, downloading the free Shulamite app is easy, and livingchristianbooks.com is only a click away. Thank you for joining us on this journey to discover a God worth knowing.